Chapter 20 It was still dark when stabbing pains woke Blue Fur, clutching her stomach like talons. She staggered to the dirt place, almost too wrapped in pain to notice the tiny mewling coming from within the nursery. But when she returned, she heard soft voices murmuring and soothing the cries. By the sound of it, Feather Whisker and Swift Breeze were still with Leopardfoot. A shadow moved at the edge of the clearing. Rosepaw was creeping out of the apprentice's den. Hey, Bluefur hissed. Rosepaw stopped and turned, her eyes flashing in the darkness. Her fur was ruffled and she looked as wretched as Bluefur felt. Got to get to the dirt place, she croaked. Bad belly, Bluefur asked. Rosepaw nodded. Sweet paw too. It must have been the mouse they'd shared. Blue fur crept back to her nest and settled down. Sleep came, but fitfully. Pain haunted her dreams. Get off, Snowfur pushed her away. You've been kicking me all night. Sorry, Blue fur groaned. Bellyache. Snowfur sat up and blinked sleepily. Should I get goose feather? Blue fur shook her head. Her belly was so cramped and sore, she found herself panting between words. He'll be too busy with the kits. Snowfur yawned and crawled back down in her nest. Tell me if you change your mind. Bluefur lay blinking in the darkness a while longer, trying not to fidget. Eventually, the urge to use the dirt place again was too much for her. She crawled out of the den and padded across the clearing. Dawn drew a milky haze over the horizon as it began to push back the night sky. The air was clear and cold, refreshing, although it made Blue Fur shiver. She paused by the nursery, her ears pricked up. A tiny mew shrilled, then another. Thanks, Star Clan. At least two of the kits had survived the night. Feeling weak, Blue Fur returned from the dirt place, breathing hard as she padded from the tunnel. Was that lion paw creeping out of the camp through the gorse? It was early for an apprentice to be heading into the forest alone. She padded after him, stopping when she reached the barrier. Pine Star's scent was fresh on the prickly branches. He must have been taking lion paw out. Blue Fur turned from the barrier and headed for her den. It seemed odd for Pine Star to take lion paw out today. Wouldn't he want to stay in the camp and see how his kits were? Perhaps it was an urgent mission. She paused in the clearing, still queasy, but struggling to understand. If the mission was urgent, why not take an experienced warrior instead of Lion Paw? She shook her head, trying to clear it, but the movement only made it spin more. Unsteadily, she crept back to her nest and gave in to the drowsiness, dragging at her bones. Aware in her sleep of the warriors moving around her, she half lifted her head. Her belly was sore, but the cramping had stopped. Go back to sleep, Snowfur was whispering in her ear. I'll explain to Sunfall that you're sick. Too tired to argue, Bluefur rested her muzzle on her paws. Then she remembered with a start. Leopardfoot? I think she's okay, Snowfur murmured. Bluefur closed her eyes. It was hot in the den when she woke. Green leaf sunshine beat down on the dark leaves, baking the nests. Panting, Bluefur crawled outside and breathed the cooler air that wafted across the clearing. The sun shone high in the sky, and the clearing was empty apart from Weed Whisker picking through the fresh kill pile and Poppy Dawn pacing outside the apprentice's den. Bluefur's belly felt as though she'd swallowed thistles but her head was clearer. She looked toward the nursery, wondering how Leopardfoot and her kits were doing. As she watched, Feather Whisker slid out. His pelt was unkempt and his eyes dull. Blue Fur hurried across the clearing. How are they? Her voice rasped in her throat. He looked at her, surprised. Are you okay? Bad belly, he sighed. Sweet paw and rose paw too. He stopped to greet Poppy Dawn. You wanted me to look at them? Poppy Dawn glanced apologetically at her paws. 
I know you've been busy, but I'm worried. Sweet Paw can hardly stand. Featherwhisker nodded and pushed his way into the apprentice's den. What about the kits? Bluefur called after him. Alive, his reply was flat. For now, at least. Bluefur glanced at Poppy Dawn. He doesn't sound hopeful. Poppy Dawn was gazing anxiously after the apprentice medicine cat, clearly more worried about her own kits than Leopardfoot's. I had the same belly ache, Bluefur told her, and I'm feeling better. Poppy Dawn jerked her head around. Did you? We shared a mouse, Bluefur explained. It must have been bad. Poppy Dawn shook her head. Rose Paw's pretty ill, but Sweet Paw. The warrior's voice trailed away. She'll recover, Blue Fur reassured her. I've never seen her so sick. The ferns rustled as Featherwhisker nosed his way out of the apprentice's den. Herbs would be pointless until they stop being sick. Just make sure they have plenty of water to drink. Find some moss and soak it in the freshest water you can find. Poppy Dawn nodded and headed for the gorse tunnel. How are you? Featherwhisker asked Bluefur. Bluefur shrugged. Just sore and tired. Go and ask Goose Feather for herbs to soothe your belly. Featherwhisker glanced at the nursery. His eyes glittered with worry. Do the kits have names? Bluefur asked. The she kits are Mist Kit and Night Kit, and the Tom is Tiger Kit. Tiger Kit? Leopardfoot had chosen a fierce name. He's the weakest of the three, Featherwhisker mewed bleakly. I suppose she hopes he's a fighter from the start. His eyes darkened. He'll need to be. Will Leopardfoot be okay? She's lost blood, but there's no sign of infection, Featherwhisker reported. She'll recover with the rest. He looked weary. Have you slept at all? Bluefur asked. He shook his head. Why don't you rest now? Bluefur suggested. The camp's quiet, and Poppy Dawn's taking care of Sweet Paw and Rose Paw. Featherwhisker nodded. Go and get those herbs from Goose Feather, he reminded her. Then I'll have one less cat to worry about. He padded to the shade of High Rock and lay down. Blue Fur headed along the fern tunnel. Why wasn't Goose Feather helping more? Why did ThunderClan seem to have the laziest, dumbest medicine cat? As she reached the end of the tunnel, she stopped. The medicine clearing was cool and green and empty. Goose Feather? Bluefur guessed he was sleeping in his den. Two eyes peered from the crack in the rock. Bluefur tensed. They were round and wild, and for a moment, she thought a fox had got in. Goose Feather? She ventured shakily. The medicine cat padded out, his pelt ruffled. His eyes were still wild, but less startling in the daylight. What is it? Feather Whisker sent me for herbs for my belly. I shared a bad mouse with Sweet Paw and Rose Paw last night. You as well? He rolled his eyes. Blue Fur nodded. Evil omens everywhere. Blue Fur wondered if she'd heard the medicine cat correctly. He was muttering as he turned back into his den and still muttering as he came out and shoved a pawful of shredded leaves in front of her. It was just a bad mouse, she meowed, wondering why he was so upset. He leaned toward her, his breath stinky in her face. Just a bad mouse, he echoed. Another warning, that's what it was. I should have seen it coming, I should have noticed. How? Bluefur backed away. It didn't taste bad. She realized that his pelt wasn't ruffled from sleep, but simply ungroomed. It clung to his frame as though the season were leaf bare and he hadn't eaten properly for a moon. She took another pace back. It was just a bad mouse, she repeated. He turned a disbelieving look on her. How can you, you of all cats, ignore the signs, he spat. Me? 
What did he mean? You have a prophecy hanging over your head like a hawk. You're fire, and only water can destroy you. You can't ignore the signs. But, but, I'm just a warrior. Was she supposed to have the insight of a medicine cat? That wasn't fair. He should be giving her answers, not taunting her with the promise of a destiny she didn't understand. She had wondered when Goosefeather would again speak to her about the prophecy. But now he was making even less sense than before. Just a warrior? His whiskers trembled. Too many omens. Three cats poisoned. Two only whiskers from Star Clan. Leopardfoot nearly dead, her three kits hanging onto life like rabbits in a fox den. He stared through her, seeming to forget she was there. Why such a difficult birth for the clan leader's mate? The kits may not make it through another night. The tom is too weak to mew, let alone feed. I should help them. And yet how can I when the signs are clear? What in the name of Star Clan was he talking about? Forgetting the herbs, Blue Fur backed out of the den. Only whiskers from Star Clan? She dashed to the apprentice's den. Were Sweet Paw and Rose Paw that ill? Pushing through the cool green ferns, she saw the two sisters curled in their nests, pelts damp. Rose Paw raised her head. Hello, Blue Fur. Sweet Paw didn't stir. Blue Fur padded to Rose Paw's nest and licked the top of her head. How are you? I felt better, she croaked. Has Poppy Dawn brought you water yet? Rose Paw shook her head. Feather Whisker said you were sick too. Blue Fur nodded. I'm feeling better now, and so will you. She glanced at Sweet Paw. The tortoiseshell had begun to writhe and groan, her eyes still closed. You both will, she promised, hoping it was true. The fern wall shivered as Poppy Dawn pushed through. Dripping moss dangled from her jaws. She placed a wad beside Rose Paw and another beside Sweet Paw. Rose Paw lapped gratefully, but Sweet Paw still didn't budge. Poppy Dawn licked Sweet Paw fiercely. Come on, Sweet, she encouraged. Wake up and wet your tongue. Sweet Paw struggled to open her eyes. Sniffing at the moss, she lapped at it feebly, then gagged, unable even to keep water down. I'll get Feather Whisker, Bluefur offered. Poppy Dawn shook her head. He's sleeping. She stroked Sweet Paw with her tail as the young cat closed her eyes once more. I'll watch over these two, she glanced at Bluefur. You should get some fresh air, she suggested, outside the ravine. The stench of the sick apprentice's den was making Bluefur's uneasy belly churn. Okay. She nosed her way through the ferns, relieved to feel clean air on her face. The forest air would be even fresher. She headed out of the camp, glancing at Feather Whisker where he slept in the shadow of High Rock. The climb up the ravine left her breathless and hot. She was thankful for the cool breeze wafting through the forest, and she wandered among the trees feeling glad to be away from the sickness and worry of camp. Birds called to one another, their song echoing through the trees. Insects buzzed above the lush undergrowth. Leaves brushed Bluefur's pelt as she padded along familiar tracks with fallen leaves from a long ago season soft under paw. The shadows darkening her thoughts began to fade. Star Clan would protect them. A butterfly fluttered a few tail lengths ahead, buffeted by the breeze. Suddenly the ferns trembled, and a bulky golden shape exploded from the green stalks. Got you! Lion Paw leaped for the butterfly, paws flailing, but the insect jerked upward out of his reach. Mouse dung! He dropped onto all four paws and watched the butterfly disappear through the branches. His eyes were sparkling, and he clawed excitedly at the grass, muttering to himself, I'll get the next one. Then he spotted Blue Fur. Hi, he mewed cheerfully. Where's Pine Star? Blue Fur tasted the air. No sign of the Thunder Clan leader. She narrowed her eyes. He and Lion Paw had left the camp together. What are you doing? Had Pine Star sent him hunting? 
Wouldn't Swift Breeze be wondering where her apprentice was? Lionpaw stared at her, blinking. Doing? There was an awkwardness in his mew, as if he was suddenly on the defensive. Nothing really. I just missed that butterfly. Where's Pine Star? She prompted. Lionpaw opened and closed his mouth. Pine Star? You know, Pine Star? Bluefur tried to ease the awkwardness by joking. Red Brown Tomcat, clan leader? You went out with him this morning. Did I? Lionpaw shifted his paws. I mean, you saw us go? Bluefur didn't want Lionpaw to think she'd been spying. I smelled your scents while I was going to the dirt place. It just seemed odd that you went out before the dawn patrol. Lionpaw's gaze flitted around the forest, resting on anything but blue fur. Well, Pine Star wanted an early start. Training. Oh. Blue fur wasn't convinced. Training you to catch butterflies? She resisted the question. Did it go well? Fine. Lionpaw circled restlessly. More than fine. Great. Pine Star's great. He's brilliant. Bluefur tipped her head on one side. So where is he now? He's on his way back. I, he, he said I couldn't tell any cat what he'd done. Lionpaw shut his mouth, eyes round with dismay. I mean, where we were. He looked at his paws. Sorry, secret. He scampered past Blue Fur, and she felt his pelt pricking up as it brushed hers. She let him escape into the trees without trying to stop him. Then a scent touched her tongue, a familiar scent. She thought for a moment, what was it? Cat mint. Lion Paw's pelt smelled of cat mint. Had they been to Two Leg Place? Was that the secret? Her paws prickled. Had they seen Jake? Surely Pine Star wasn't encouraging the apprentices to mingle with kitty pets. She dashed after Lionpaw. She had to know more. Pine Star's despairing words echoed in her head. The clans will be enemies forever. Was the Thunder Clan leader so disillusioned with clan life that he'd rather be among kitty pets? How could he break the warrior code like that? Lionpaw was already halfway down the ravine. She scrabbled down the rocks after him. Hey, Stormtail's yowl sounded below. Stop throwing rocks. She skidded to a halt, realizing that her paws were sending showers of stones down the slope. Sorry, she called. She waited while Stormtail led his patrol up the trail past her. Be more careful next time, Stormtail scolded. Blue Fur hung her head as White Eye, Robin Wing, and Thrush Pelt filed after him. Don't worry, Thrush Pelt whispered. We've all done it. As soon as they'd gone, Blue Fur scrambled down the ravine, more carefully this time. She headed into the clearing and saw Lion Paw settling down with a piece of prey. At least he was alone. She would ask him straight out Had Pine Star been getting him to talk to kitty pets? The gorse tunnel quivered, and Pine Star padded into camp. Fox dung. The Thunder Clan leader looked calm, his pelt smooth and smelling strongly of bracken, as if he had been rolling in fresh ferns. Why? It was obvious. To get rid of the scent of cat mint and two legs. How could he? He was their leader for Star Clan's sake. Pine Star headed straight for the nursery. Feather Whisker slid out as he approached. Leopardfoot's sleeping, he told the Thunder Clan leader. The kits, too, since they've had some milk at last. Pine Star twitched the tip of his tail. Can I see them? Feather Whisker stood aside. The Tom's the weakest, he warned as Pine Star squeezed into the brambles. Poppy Dawn padded over to join Swift Breeze. About time, too she meowed, not bothering to keep her voice quiet. If his kits had died in the night, they'd have gone to Star Clan without ever meeting their father. Swift Breeze shook her head. Poor Leopardfoot, 
She kept asking for him. What must she think? Bluefur glanced at her paws. She wasn't the only cat in ThunderClan questioning Pine Star's loyalty. But she suspected she was the only one who knew just how far from the warrior code he was straying. Chapter 21 A few sunrises later, Blue Fur approached Sunfall, who was washing below High Rock. I'll go on the Sun High Patrol, she offered, relieved to catch him before he called the clan together to assign duties for the day. The Thunder Clan deputy blinked. You've been volunteering for a lot of patrols lately. Have you forgotten how to hunt? Bluefur paused. She was hoping he hadn't noticed that she'd been tagging on to any border patrol she could. She wanted to check Two Leg Place for any scent of Pine Star. She'd watch the Thunder Clan leader closely, wondering every time he left the camp where he was going and whether to follow. There had been no scent of him on the Two Leg border so far and she was beginning to wonder if she'd let her imagination run away with her. I just like patrolling, she told Sunfall lamely. But I'll hunt instead if you like. Perhaps you might find it a little more interesting if you led a hunting patrol, Sunfall suggested. Bluefur pricked her ears. Yes, please. Good, Sunfall signaled with his tail. As the clan gathered, worry fluttered in Bluefur's belly. She'd never led a patrol before. Would she know what to do? Would she have to decide where to hunt, what prey to chase, how much to catch? Fine weather again, Adderfang observed as he padded toward the ThunderClan deputy. Thistlepaw was at his heels, eager for any assignment that took him closer to being a warrior. The other warriors and apprentices padded after them. Robin Wing was licking her lips, swallowing the last of her meal while Dappletail kept bending to lick her chest. Her morning wash was clearly not quite finished. Sweet Paw was not with Small Ear. For three sunsets, she'd lain in her nest, too weak to move, unable to eat. Poppy Dawn had taken to sleeping outside the apprentice's den, too worried to leave her ailing kit. Small Ear had kept himself so busy helping Tawny Spots with Rosepaw's training that the red-tailed apprentice had passed two assessments in as many days. Lionpaw was sick with envy. She'll be a warrior before me, he'd complained. She started her training before you, Blue Fur had pointed out. She had decided not to question the golden-furred apprentice about Pine Star, though she longed to. She knew that if her suspicions were wrong, Lionpaw would wonder why she was spreading rumors about ThunderClan's leader. If they were right, the young cat could be too torn between loyalty to his leader and friendship with his denmate to tell the truth. It was too much to ask of him. Snowfur! Sunfall's mew snapped Bluefur from her thoughts. You'll patrol the RiverClan border with Thrushpelt, Tawny Spots, Sparrowpelt, and Windflight. Sunfall always sent a strong patrol to check Sunning Rocks these days. No one was sure how far RiverClan was prepared to push its luck. Dappletail and Goldenpaw, you check the ShadowClan border with Speckletail. Sunfall glanced at Poppy Dawn, hollow-eyed beside the apprentice's den. Was he wondering if she'd be better off patrolling than fretting over her kit? His gaze flickered back to his assembled clanmates. Adderfang, Thistlepaw, Small Ear, and Robin Wing. The cats straightened as he called their names. You will hunt. Thistlepaw circled his mentor, tail up. Blue Fur will lead the patrol, Sunfall added. What? Thistlepaw stared at Blue Fur. You heard me. Sunfall padded away to join Poppy Dawn, leaving Blue Fur to face the spiky apprentice's disbelieving glare. Thistlepaw cocked his head to one side. So, where are we going to hunt? Snake rocks. Bluefur blurted out the first place that came into her head. Adderfang watched her coolly. Risky, he meowed, but it might be worth it. No cat has hunted there for a moon. Because it's infested with adders and foxes, Thistlepaw sneered. Bluefur's tail whisked to the ground. You're not scared, are you? 
she stared at him. She was not going to be intimidated by an apprentice, even if he was bigger than her now. She was a warrior, and she deserved his respect. She glanced at Robin Wing and Small Ear. Ready? Small Ear nodded, and Robin Wing plucked the ground as if she couldn't wait to get moving. Good. Blue Fur headed for the Gorse Tunnel, praying her patrol was following. As she padded out of camp, she heard with relief Paul's steps following behind. She led her clanmates up the ravine and into the forest. Why are we taking the long route? Thistlepaw called, as Blue Fur headed into a gully toward Snake Rocks. Blue Fur hesitated, suddenly doubting her sense of direction. This way's not so steep, Robin Wing meowed, and it's softer on the paws. Yeah, right, Thistlepaw muttered. Blue Fur pressed on. Why don't we take this shortcut? Thistlepaw scampered ahead of her and leaped onto a fallen log. He flicked his tail toward a thick bramble. We'd lose our pelts in there, Blue Fur snapped. Was he going to undermine her every paw step of the way? Just fall in behind, Thistlepaw, Adderfang ordered. Save your energy for hunting. Thistlepaw padded sulkily to the back of the patrol. Ahead of them, a branch rustled with life. Blue Fur halted and crouched, signaling for her patrol to copy her. There was no harm in bagging a bird or two on the way. She crept slowly forward, eyeing the leaves as they twitched to reveal a small song thrush. Are we hunting at snake rocks or what? Thistlepaw mewed loudly. The thrush fluttered up into the higher branches, calling an alarm. He did that on purpose. Thistlepaw, Small Ear scolded. Now every piece of prey will know we're here but Adderfang had already turned on his apprentice. We're hunting for the clan, he hissed. Thistlepaw crouched apologetically as Adderfang bared his teeth, but managed to flash a sly look of triumph at Blue Fur. Come on, she growled. Let's get to Snake Rocks. By the time they arrived at the rocky outcrop, she had already decided how to punish Thistlepaw. She sniffed the air remembering the fox that had chased her and Snowfur last time they'd been there. No fresh stench. She padded to the clearing at the foot of the rocks. You guard here, she ordered Thistlepaw, thinking that the fox might return after all. Tell us if you scent danger. We'll look for prey up there. She nodded toward the wall of boulders rising behind them. Glancing around the rest of the patrol, she added, Don't forget. There might be adders hiding in the crevices. Small Ear and Robin Wing nodded. Adderfang watched her, his expression impossible to read. Blue Fur felt very uncomfortable giving instructions to senior warriors, but Sunfall had put her in charge of the patrol and she was determined to do things properly. Why do I have to be guard? Thistlepaw complained. It's boring. Adderfang lashed his tail. Because you proved back there that hunting is the last thing on your mind today. Thistlepaw sullenly flicked a leaf with his paw, but didn't argue. With a flash of satisfaction, Blue Fur leaped up the rocks, her mouth open to taste the air for prey signs. Small Ear disappeared into the undergrowth, while Adderfang and Robin Wing each took a different route up the boulders. Look out! Thistlepaw yowled. Blue Fur tensed glancing over her shoulder. What? Nothing, he reported, studying something on the ground by his front paws. Just a beetle. Scowling, Blue Fur returned to the hunt. Mouse. She scented it a moment before she saw a shadow flicker in the crevice between two boulders. Pricking her ears to check for the slither of scales, she crouched. No sign of any snakes. She shot a forepaw down the fissure and hooked out the mouse. Killing it quickly, she tossed it down onto the ground beside Thistlepaw. Guard it, don't eat it, she told him. Thistlepaw flashed her a look of fury, but she just turned and climbed to the top of the rocks. Snake! Thistlepaw's alarm call made Blue Fur spin around and peer over the edge, 
clinging on with her claws as the ground spun far below. Thistlepaw was looking up at her innocently. Oops, he mewed. It was just Small Ear's tail sticking out of the ferns. Feeling her fur spike with anger, Blue Fur returned to the hunt. Now she could smell rabbit. Tiny drops of fresh dung littered the top of the boulders, reminding her of the old apprentice trick of telling kits they were tasty berries. She followed the scent trail toward the leafy bank that spilled onto the top of snake rocks. Silently, she crept across the stone, her whiskers stiff with excitement. Something white was twitching beneath a bush up ahead. Blue fur tensed and dropped into her hunting crouch. Drawing herself silently forward, she breathed in so her belly didn't brush the leaves. The rabbit scent made her mouth water. Watch out! Thistlepaw was yowling yet again. What was the mouse brain playing at this time? Blue fur blocked out the noise. Nothing was going to stop her from getting the rabbit. It bobbed deeper into the bush. Blue fur followed, slowly pushing her head between the leaves. There it was, grazing on the soft shoots that sprouted from the middle of the bush. Blue fur unsheathed her claws, stilled her tail, and leaped. She landed squarely on the rabbit and made the killing bite before it realized what was happening. A twitch, then another, and it was dead. Blue fur dragged it out from the bush, pleased at the weight of it. It would feed the elders and leopard foot. Dog! Thistlepaw's shout suddenly pierced her ear fur. There was fear in his wail this time. Bluefur's pelt stood on end as she smelled the dog stench and heard giant clumsy paws thundering on the forest floor, only tail lengths away. With the rabbit still in her jaws, she launched herself at the nearest tree trunk, scrabbling up it like a squirrel, her neck straining from the weight of her catch. Jaws snapped below her, and she flicked her tail out of the way just in time as the dog jumped around the base of the tree, snarling and snapping, its eyes wild with excitement. Bluefur scrambled higher, her claws gouging bark, sending it showering down as the dog stretched its forepaws higher up the trunk. Heart thudding, she scanned the forest. She could make out Robin Wing's brown pelt on a branch of a tree nearby. Thistlepaw, Adderfang was calling. Up here! The answer came from somewhere level with her head, and Blue Fur guessed the apprentice was safely up a tree as well. She wanted to check whether Small Ear was okay, but there was no way she could call out without dropping the rabbit. She was relieved when Adderfang yowled the warrior's name instead, and Small Ear replied, sounding breathless but intact. Safe. Blue Fur? Adderfang was calling for her now. Blue Fur tightened her grip on the rabbit, unable to reply. How would she get down? This dog would never give up the promise of cat and rabbit. The blood tang must already be singing on its tongue. A two leg barked. The dog froze, then growled with annoyance as the two leg barked again. Whining, the dog finally dropped to the ground and lolloped away. Her jaws aching from the pull of the rabbit, Blue Fur waited until the swishing of both two leg and dog had faded. Then slowly, shakily, she let herself drop, paw over paw, down the trunk. She landed on all four feet, claws burning, and hurried back to the top of snake rocks. Blue Fur! Her clanmates were circling in the clearing below, calling anxiously. Quickly, she bounded down the rocks and flung the rabbit at their paws. Sorry, she panted. Couldn't answer before. Robin Wing's eyes glowed. Nice catch. Didn't you hear my warning? Thistlepaw demanded angrily. I was calling for ages. I heard that dog coming tree lengths away. I heard it, Blue Fur snapped. She wasn't going to admit she had ignored it. But what could I do? I had a mouth full of rabbit. Small Ear trotted to the roots of an ash tree and dug a sparrow from the leaves that had drifted in a cleft. Adderfang scooted up snake rocks and retrieved a freshly killed shrew from between two boulders. What about my mouse? Blue Fur asked Thistlepaw. Her heart was slowing down and her legs had stopped trembling. She wanted to get back in charge of this patrol. 
Don't worry, it's safe, Thistlepaw retorted, his eyes glittering. He dug in the soil and unearthed the mouse. Well done, Bluefur congratulated him. I think we have enough. Back to camp? Robin Wing asked. Bluefur nodded. She picked up her rabbit and headed back toward the ravine. Thistlepaw was muttering under his breath as she passed him. What's the point of making me guard if no one takes any notice? I climbed a tree as soon as you yowled, Smallier objected. Stop complaining. Adderfang shooed his apprentice forward. We all escaped. And kept our prey, Robin Wing added. Blue Fur's neck was aching from the weight of the rabbit by the time they neared the ravine. She was trying her best not to let it drag along the ground. But the closer they got, the more its pelt scuffed the leaves. She couldn't wait to drop it on the fresh kill pile. Thistlepaw raced into the lead as they reached the edge and scooted first down the cliff. Blue Fur thumped down after him, the rabbit swinging awkwardly from her jaws. Listen. Thistlepaw skidded to a halt in front of her, and she almost crashed into him, her face full of rabbit fur. Woof, she mumbled. Thistlepaw's ears were pricked, his pelt bristling. I can hear something. The rest of the patrol had stopped behind Blue Fur. Me too. Robin Wing hissed. Adderfang was scenting the air as Blue Fur turned to look back up the path. It's that dog, he warned. It's coming back. Small Ear spun around. It can smell the rabbit. Paws thudded over the forest floor near the top of the ravine. Leaves swished and twigs crashed. The dog was charging toward them, fast. It mustn't find the camp, Adderfang growled. Blue Fur pictured the dog rampaging through the dens. Leopardfoot's kits would never survive. She dropped the rabbit. I'll take this to the top and leave it. It might be enough to stop the dog following. Good plan, Adderfang nodded. Small Ear warned the clan, get warriors to guard the entrance in case the dog does follow. As Small Ear haired away, Blue Fur picked up the rabbit and began to shoulder past her clanmates, praying that leaving her catch would be enough to distract the dog. No! Thistlepaw's angry yowl made her freeze. We caught that rabbit. We're going to keep it. He bounded past Blue Fur and disappeared over the top. Thistlepaw! Adderfang chased him up the stack of boulders. Blue Fur tossed the rabbit at Robin Wing's paws. If the dog comes over the top, leave it here. It might stop it. She pelted after Adderfang, bounding up the rock and over the edge of the ravine in time to see the dog crash from the undergrowth. Thistlepaw faced it, his back arched and his tail bushed out. As the dog lunged at him, he swiped a forepaw across its muzzle, then aimed another slice at its eye. Blood sprayed the forest floor. Yelping, the dog sprang back and bared its teeth before lunging again. This time, Thistlepaw swerved, diving under its belly and twisting to rake it with hind claws. The dog howled with rage, but Thistlepaw was ready, rearing up, his claws glistening with blood. He swiped again at the dog's muzzle, batting it with blow after blow, until the dog began to back away. Run back to your two-leg, Thistlepaw hissed, aiming a vicious swipe that missed the snapping jaws by a whisker, but sliced open the dog's nose. Howling, the dog turned and fled into the forest. Adderfang's eyes were wide. Blessed Star Clan, he breathed. Thistlepaw stared triumphantly at his mentor. There was no way it was going to steal clan prey. Bluefur blinked. She'd never seen such courage, however foolish it had been. She stepped back, speechless, as Thistlepaw shouldered past. Stormtail, Sunfall, and Pinestar were standing with their hackles up at the base of the ravine. They watched in amazement as Thistlepaw bounded down the cliff. The dog's gone, he announced, hardly out of breath, before brushing past them and heading for the gorse tunnel. Blue Fur picked up the rabbit and followed. While Thistlepaw accepted the praise of his clanmates, she quietly placed it on the fresh kill pile. He nearly sliced off its nose, Adderfang was boasting. How big was it? 
Poppy Dom breathed. Bigger than a badger, Thistlepaw mewed. Mumblefoot and Weed Whisker padded from the fallen tree. He fought a dog? Mumblefoot gasped. No clan cats tried that since Lion Clan walked the forest. Pine Star leaped onto High Rock. Clan mates, he called. I can think of no better moment to give Thistlepaw his warrior name. The clan cheered its approval. Pine Star leaped down from High Rock to meet Thistlepaw in the center of the clearing. Step forward, young Tom. A warrior already, Windflight murmured proudly. Poppy Dawn glanced over her shoulder at the apprentice's den. Sweet Paw's drawn face poked out, her eyes shining as she watched her littermate. There'll be no warrior name for her yet, Bluefur thought sadly. A prickle of alarm shot through her as Sweet Paw drew her frail body through the ferns and crouched down, trembling, just outside the den. Pine Star lifted his muzzle. From this moment, you will be known as Thistleclaw. Star Clan honors your bravery and your fighting skill. Thunder Clan will always remember your courage today, and we welcome you as a full warrior of Thunder Clan. Serve your clan well. He pressed his muzzle to Thistleclaw's head. Thistleclaw gazed proudly around at his clanmates as Snowfur hurried to his side and pressed her muzzle against his, purring. Blue fur forced her fur to lie flat. There was so much arrogance in Thistleclaw's amber stare. What kind of warrior would he make? He was brave, he had proved that, but wariness pricked her belly. Pride had no place in a warrior's heart. Overconfidence could be dangerous, to his clanmates as well as himself. Sunfall padded to the fresh kill pile and began tossing pieces of prey to his clanmates. If this doesn't call for a feast, nothing does, he meowed, flinging the rabbit at Weed Whisker's paws. The elder's eyes sparkled. Larksong nudged him aside. I hope you're going to share that. Swift Breeze took a blackbird to the nursery for Leopardfoot, slipping out a moment later to join Adderfang and Dappletail. The clan shared the fresh kill and listened to the elders' stories till the moon was high overhead. Eventually, Pine Star yawned and got to his paws. The clan cats fell silent as their leader gazed around the clearing. I could not be more proud of my clan, he began. Bluefur narrowed her eyes. Thistleclaw's warrior ceremony was over, and it was unlike Pine Star to make unnecessary speeches. Thank you, all of you. Dipping his head, he ducked away and disappeared into his den. It almost sounds as though he was saying goodbye. She'd overheard Larksong telling Mumblefoot that Pine Star was on his last life. Perhaps that's why the clan leader had sounded so somber. Each battle could be his last. Bluefur got to her paws, her neck aching again, and headed for her den. Snowfur was already there, circling into her nest. Thistleclaw was curled on the ground beside her. He'd have to build himself a nest tomorrow, and Bluefur guessed with a snort where he'd build it. She shivered, missing the comfort of her sister's pelt. Snowfur used to press against Bluefur, keeping her warm with her fluffy white fur. But tonight she was curled as near to Thistleclaw as the bracken would allow. Bluefur sighed. Now that he'd moved into the warrior's den, there would be no getting away from the conceited young Tom. If Snowfur had to find a mate, why couldn't she pick a cat that Bluefur actually liked? Chapter 22 She won't wake up, she won't wake up! Poppy Dawn's terrified mew rang around the sleeping camp. Bluefur shot out of her nest. Sweet paw. She knew instinctively the moment she reached the clearing and saw Poppy Dawn's wild eyes that the tortoise shell apprentice was dead. I've licked and shaken her and she won't open her eyes. The queen cried out in anguish. The clan cats were hurrying from their dens. 
blinking in the pre-dawn light as Blue Fur pushed her way into the apprentice's den and crouched beside Sweet Paw's nest. She pressed her muzzle into her former den mate's fur. The strange stillness of her body and the coldness of her pelt pierced Blue Fur's heart. She had been beside a cat like this before. And all the wishing in the world hadn't brought Moonflower back. Sweet Paw, she whispered, knowing the apprentice couldn't hear her. Sweet Paw. Grief blurring her gaze, she rested her chin on Sweet Paw's flank. The ferns rustled, and Feather Whisker slid into the den. Blue Fur lifted her head and stared at the apprentice medicine cat. She's dead. She'll be with Star Clan now, Feather Whisker murmured. He pressed his muzzle to Blue Fur's head as though guessing her thoughts. Moonflower will look after her. She blinked. But Sweet Paw's not a warrior, she breathed. Will she be allowed to join Star Clan? Of course, Feather Whisker mewed. She was born a clan cat. Star Clan will welcome her but we'll never hunt together. Feather Whisker nudged her gently. Wait outside, please, he mewed. Blue Fur pushed through the ferns and saw the eyes of her clan flashing in the half light. Poppy Dawn stared at her and spoke in a dull voice. She's dead, isn't she? Rosepaw was sitting at her mother's side. She pressed harder against Poppy Dawn as Blue Fur nodded. Thistleclaw joined them, his tail trailing. Can I see her? He asked. Poppy Dawn touched the top of his head lightly with her tail. Of course, little one. Wish your sister well on her journey to our ancestors. As Thistleclaw disappeared into the den, Rosepaw looked at her mother. Were you with her when? I was asleep. Poppy Dawn choked with grief. I woke up and she smelled. She seemed to search for the word. Different. Blue Fur understood. She remembered the scent of her mother's body, a scent of death that even lavender and rosemary could not disguise. A tiny mew sounded outside the nursery. Blue Fur peered past the pelts of her clanmates and saw a tiny tabby Tom sitting at the edge of the clearing. Sunfall padded forward to greet him. Hey there, are you Tiger Kit? The kit stared straight past him at the somber gathering of cats. What's going on? He squeaked. Sweet Paw's dead, Sunfall told him gravely. Tiger Kit tipped his head on one side. Was she a warrior? Tiger Kit, Swift Breeze hopped out of the nursery. What are you doing out here? I wanted to know why everyone was awake, Tiger Kit replied. Swift Breeze licked his head. I can see you're going to be the inquisitive one. She glanced at Sunfall. He was the weakest of the litter, and now he's the strongest. I was never the weakest, Tiger Kit protested, opening his tiny pink mouth wide in indignation. Of course not, little one. Swift Breeze scooped him up by the scruff and carried him, paws churning, back into the nursery. Goosefeather padded from the fern tunnel. What's going on? Poppy Dawn flashed him a reproachful look. Sweet Paw's dead. Goosefeather sighed. When Star Clan calls, even the best medicine cat cannot heal. Feather Whisker appeared from the nursery. Goosefeather's right, he mewed. We did all we could. We're lucky to have you, Feather Whisker, Dappletail meowed. No cat spoke up for Goosefeather. With a cold feeling deep inside her fur, Blue Fur realized that the clan seemed to have lost all faith in its old medicine cat. When White Eye had a thorn in her pad, it had been Feather Whisker she'd sought out. And Swift Breeze now consulted with the apprentice medicine cat about Leopardfoot and her kits whenever she was worried. Blue Fur glanced at Goosefeather. He didn't seem to have noticed Dappletail's slanted comment. His eyes were unfocused, 
as though something else was crowding his thoughts. If no cat trusted Goosefeather anymore, was Blue Fur foolish to believe his prophecy? Dappletail pressed against Poppy Dawn. I'll help you prepare Sweet Paw for the vigil, she murmured. Poppy Dawn blinked. Yes, she stood up. I'll get Rosemary. Blue Fur turned away. She could not bear to see another cat prepared for their journey to Star Clan. She felt Sunfall's muzzle brush her shoulder. Come with me, he ordered. I'm taking the Dawn Patrol. He nodded to Lionpaw. You can come too. Rosepaw stepped forward. Can I? Of course. Sunfall brushed his tail along the flank of the grieving apprentice. Tawny spots, he signaled to Rosepaw's mentor. Call Swift Breeze and join us. Blue Fur's paws were heavy as she padded through the tunnel behind the clan deputy and the rest of the patrol, but she was relieved to leave her mourning clanmates behind. Once they'd reached the top of the ravine and headed into the forest, Sunfall fell in beside her. I know Sweet Paw's death is sad, he meowed quietly. But the clan must carry on. The borders must be guarded, and the fresh kill pile must remain stocked. Blue Fur felt heavy inside, as if her belly were filled with stones. But Sunfall was right. She had to protect her clan, however much pain she was in. The other cats were suffering, too. The patrol moved slowly through the trees, with Swift Breeze pressing close to Rosepaw. No one spoke as they neared the border with sunning rocks. The sun had lifted over the horizon, and its pale light filtered through the trees. Birds were stirring, their calls filling the forest with song. Bluefur wished they'd shut up. Don't be mouse-brained, she told herself. How are they supposed to know or care that Sweet Paw is dead? Wait, Sunfall's hiss surprised her, and she froze with one front paw still in the air. The ThunderClan deputy was sniffing the breeze, the fur lifting along his spine. RiverClan. Blue fur scanned the trees along the edge of the forest and saw sunning rocks glowing in the dawn light. RiverClan scent was drifting over the border stronger than before. Look! Swift Breeze had dropped into a crouch. Her eyes were fixed on a leafy rise, sloping beyond a swath of brambles. They've crossed the border. Blue Fur bristled when she spotted the tip of a sleek, oily tail, then another. The tang of fish bathed her tongue. Branches swished as a River Clan patrol moved stealthily through the undergrowth. I knew it, Sunfall growled. Keeping low so that his orange pelt was hidden by ferns, he signaled to Lionpaw. Go back to the camp and tell Pinestar we're being invaded. Those River Clan warriors have deliberately crossed the border. We can't let them get away with it. Pinestar needs to send a fighting patrol here at once. Lionpaw nodded and whipped around. He squeezed past blue fur and tawny spots and pelted back along the trail that led to the ravine. Get back. Sunfall ordered the rest of his patrol, keeping his mew low. He scooted into thick ferns and the patrol followed, crouching among the fronds. Anger raged in Blue Fur's belly. Why should they have to hide in their own territory? We'll attack as soon as the backup patrol gets here, Sunfall breathed. The River Clan patrol was moving more clumsily now that they'd reached the brambles. Blue Fur heard one cat curse and imagined the thorns dragging at the thick River Clan pelts. They weren't used to this dense scrub or to forest thorns. Let it slow them down, she prayed, unsheathing her claws. She tried to peer through the leaves. How many River Clan warriors were there? Were they heading for the camp? She scowled at the River Clan stench. They're leaving markers, she growled to Sunfall, on our territory. They don't know which way to head, Swift Breeze observed. The River Clan patrol was struggling through the brambles, heading away from the ravine. What's their plan? Rosepaw asked. 
Sunfall paused, considering the situation. There aren't enough of them to attack the camp. And if that's their aim, they're going the wrong way, thanks Star Clan. My guess is that they're looking for a patrol to attack. But why? Bluefur struggled to understand what River Clan could possibly gain by sending so few warriors and so unprepared into rival territory. They want to prove that this part of the forest is theirs. Never. Bluefur fought the urge to race out of the bushes and hurl herself at the River Clan patrol. She knew it would be reckless and pointless. What could she alone do against a whole patrol? But she was supposed to be fire, blazing through the forest. Perhaps she should attack like Thistleclaw had attacked that dog. She closed her eyes and ran through the battle moves Sunfall had taught her. Sunfall must have sensed her paws shifting restlessly. We'll attack as soon as the other patrol gets here, he promised. Ferns rustled behind them, and Thrushpelt pushed his way through. We've seen the River Clan patrol, he reported, but they didn't see us. They're too busy fighting thorns. Sunfall chuckled. I get the feeling they're not too comfortable on Thunder Clan territory. We should force them to fight where the undergrowth is thickest, Thrushpelt suggested. Won't that make it harder to attack? Swift Breeze questioned. Hard for us. But even harder for them, Sunfall answered. They're not used to brambles, and we are. He glanced at Thrushpelt. Who did you bring? Stormtail, Thistleclaw, Fuzzypelt, Snowfur, Windflight, and Patchpelt, Thrushpelt reported. There's another patrol waiting at the top of the ravine, in case RiverClan breaks through our line. We didn't know how many warriors RiverClan had brought. Sunfall narrowed his eyes. We have enough to drive them off. Thistleclaw shouldered his way to the front. We should do more than drive them off, he growled. We should give them a battle they won't forget in a hurry. Once they know we can drive them away, they'll think twice about invading again, Sunfall pointed out. He swung his head around to Stormtail. We'll split into three patrols. You head one and meet them on the rise up there. He signaled toward a slope where the River Clan cats seemed to be heading. Take Patchpelt and Swift Breeze. You attack first. We'll come in from the sides as you drive them back. Wind flight? The gray tabby warrior lifted his chin. Yes. Stay here with Fuzzy Pelt, Thrush Pelt, and Thistleclaw. Attack when you hear Stormtail signal. He went on. I'll take Blue Fur, Snow Fur, Rose Paw, and Tawny Spots and attack their other flank. We'll leave the path to the border clear so they can retreat. We should shred them where they fall, not let them escape, Thistleclaw hissed. Sunfall glared at him. Warriors do not need to shed blood to win battles. He slid through the ferns, and Blue Fur followed with Snow Fur at her heels. Sunfall led them toward the ravine and doubled back, using another route until they could see the River Clan warriors fighting their way out of the brambles. Bluefur heard one of the warriors hissing, What do we want such stupid territory for? More prey for River Clan, less for Thunder Clan. That was Shellheart, the River Clan deputy. Now stop fussing and keep moving. Bluefur peered over the low bushes. The wind was with them, blowing River Clan scent over Stormtail's patrol as it waited to ambush. As RiverClan headed up the slope, Bluefur saw the ferns quiver where Windflight's patrol crouched, ready for Stormtail's signal. The RiverClan patrol looked strong and fit. Bluefur bared her teeth. We'll just have to fight harder then. They'd escaped the brambles, though their fur was matted with thorns. Creeping up the rise, ears flat, tails down, they halted at a flick of Shellheart's tail. Her hackles were up. I smell Thunder Clan, she warned. Timberfur, a brown River Clan warrior, tasted the air. Fresh scent. The warriors behind looked warily over their shoulder. Perhaps? Timberfur didn't get a chance to finish his sentence. Stormtail launched himself at Shellheart, yowling the signal. Swift Breeze and Patchpelt hurtled after. Timberfur reared up. 
Shellheart ducked, and the other warriors spun around, their eyes wide, as Windflight's patrol exploded from the ferns to one side. Attack! Sunfall screeched, pelting forward. Bluefur surged after him and flung herself onto the back of a RiverClan warrior. She recognized the black and silver markings of Rippleclaw as she dug her claws into his pelt, struggling to get a grip on the oily fur. Rippleclaw shook her off and turned, rearing up. There wasn't enough time to scramble to her paws. Blue fur rolled out of the way a heartbeat before he crashed down where she'd fallen. His paws caught in a trailing tendril, and he cursed as the thorns sliced his pads. Blue fur raked her claw down his flank as he turned on her, his ears flattened. She tried to duck, but Rippleclaw's blow came too fast. A heavy forepaw swiped her muzzle and pain shot through her. As she stumbled and pressed a paw to her bleeding nose, a white pelt flashed beside her. Snowfur reared up and began batting Rippleclaw hard, one paw after another. Yes. Memories of the fight with Crookedjaw flooded back to Bluefur. They'd won together before. They'd win again this time. Bluefur pushed herself up on her hind legs beside her sister and joined in. Rippleclaw staggered backward, his flailing paws defending now, not attacking. They drove him back into a bramble bush. He tripped as branches swarmed around his hind legs, yowling when the thorns pierced his pelt. Together, Bluefur and Snowfur dropped onto all four paws and as one, began nipping at him. Confused and panicking, Rippleclaw struggled free of the brambles. He leaped and turned, but Snowfur and Bluefur pressed on with their attack, Snowfur biting his flanks from one side, and when Rippleclaw twisted to attack them, Bluefur cuffing him from the other. Screeching in rage, the black and silver tom jumped over their backs and haired away through the trees. One down, Snowfur puffed. More to go. Bluefur spun around, tasting the air. She couldn't detect the scents of crooked jaw or oak heart. That's good, right? Because they're both strong warriors, and I wouldn't want to meet them here after fighting for this long already. She ducked out of the way as Windflight chased another River Clan warrior yelping into the trees. Thrushpelt rolled past Bluefur's paws, clutching Otter Splash, clawing her spine with his hind claws until the River Clan warrior yowled for mercy. Stormtail aimed a hefty swipe at a River Clan apprentice and sent him bowling into his clanmate. The two cats lost their balance, and Stormtail jumped on them, clawing one with his forepaws while he sent the other flying with a mighty kick from his hind legs. Fight, you mouse hearts! Shellheart howled at her clanmates as Blue first sprang at her and landed on her back. Did you think it would be easy? She hissed as she sank her teeth into the River Clan deputy's shoulder. Claws hooked Bluefur in return, and Shellheart managed to tear her off. She yowled as her forepaw was wrenched, its claw still tangled in Shellheart's fur. Sick with agony, she freed herself and spun around. Timberfur faced her. Gasping with pain, Bluefur reared up to fight the burly brown tom, but Snowfur was already dragging him backward, sinking her teeth into his scruff. As he toppled over, Bluefur rushed at his belly, crashing into him so hard she heard the breath rush from him. Gasping, Timberfur wriggled free and fled toward the River Clan border. A frightened shriek ripped the air. Rosepaw! Bluefur shot through the brambles, slithering between the branches with practiced ease. Bursting out on the other side, she saw Rosepaw cornered between the roots of an oak by two River Clan warriors. Pick on someone your own size, Bluefur yowled and flung herself onto the back of the biggest tom. River Clan has never fought fair, Snowfur's screech sounded behind her. And as Bluefur tumbled the big tom over, she saw her sister sink her claws into the other tom's pelt and drag him away from the startled ThunderClan apprentice. Her mouth choked with River Clan fur, Bluefur managed to yell at Rosepaw, Go for his belly! Rosepaw lunged forward, thrashing at the tom with unsheathed claws until he twisted so hard in Bluefur's grip, she had to let go. The tom growled and swiped at Rosepaw, but the apprentice was too fast. She ducked out of the way and the tom shredded bark instead.
Can't move fast enough out of the water, fish face? Bluefur taunted him. The tom hissed and lunged for her, but Rosepaw darted under his belly and threw him off balance. Snowfur had already sent the other tom pelting into the undergrowth. His clanmate staggered to his paws to face three hissing she-cats, and Bluefur felt a surge of satisfaction as panic filled his gaze. He backed toward the roots as they advanced. Do you think you can take on all three of us? Snowfur challenged. He could try, Rosepaw growled. He looks pretty mouse-brained. Bluefur felt power surge through her paws, but she pressed down the urge to attack. This warrior was outnumbered. They could easily beat him, which means we should let him escape. She flashed a warning glance at her clanmates, hoping they understood. Snowfur nodded and stepped aside, leaving a gap in their ranks. Without hesitating, the River Clan warrior pelted through it and fled toward the border. As Blue Fur slid back through the brambles, she saw Sunfall kick out with his hind legs and send a River Clan warrior reeling. Blue Fur dived out of the way just in time as the River Clan warrior tumbled past her. Retreat! Shellheart yelped, and the remaining River Clan warriors turned and fled. Their deputy paused, his eyes gleaming. The rocks are still ours, but never the trees, Sunfall snarled in return. Exhilarated, Bluefur chased the retreating warriors to the border. We'll have the rocks back too one day, Thistleclaw yowled as RiverClan splashed across the river, made shallow by Greenleaf. Sunfall lifted his muzzle. One of his ears was torn and blood dripped onto his cheek. Well fought. He gazed around at his clanmates. Any serious injuries? Bluefur remembered her wrenched claw, which was throbbing and swollen underneath. It hurt, but it could wait till she got back to camp. Just a few scratches, Thrushpelt reported. Otter Splash bit me, Patchpelt complained. I'm going to smell of fish for days. Bluefur stiffened when she noticed Snowfur's white pelt stained with blood. Are you okay? She gasped. Snowfur looked at the streaks. It's not my blood. Relieved, Bluefur flicked her tail across Snowfur's ears. They won't be back in a hurry, Thistleclaw crowed. Stormtail was still watching the river, his eyes dark. They shouldn't have tried it in the first place, he snarled. They already have sunning rocks. Come on, Sunfall meowed briskly. Let's report back to camp. Blue Fur followed her sister into the trees. Ears pricked, she overheard Stormtail muttering to Sunfall. They'll be back, he growled. We lost their respect when we gave up sunning rocks without a fight. That was Pine Star's decision, Sunfall meowed evenly. Maybe. Stormtail hissed, but he should be around to back it up. Yes, where is Pine Star? Sunfall meowed, as if he'd only just noticed the clan leader hadn't taken part in the battle. Why didn't he lead your patrol? Stormtail shrugged. You'd better ask Pine Star that, because no one else in ThunderClan seems to know where he is. Blue Fur felt the familiar unsettling tingle in her paws. Something was wrong with Pine Star. Something was very wrong indeed. Chapter 23 We drove them off, Sunfall announced to the waiting clan as soon as the patrol filed into the camp through the gorse tunnel. Adderfang padded forward. No other river clan activity in the area, he reported. We've searched thoroughly. Thank you. Sunfall dipped his head. Bluefur only half heard the exchange. Her eyes were drawn to Sweetpaw's small, bony body lying in the center of the clearing. Poppy Dawn and Dappletail had smoothed her fur and arranged her paws under her just as the clan had done with Moonflower. The exhilaration of the battle was instantly swallowed up by grief. Bluefur stood and watched numbly as Rosepaw padded past and crouched beside her sister. Thistleclaw walked stiffly over and gave Sweetpaw a final lick between her ears. 
I'll help bury her after the vigil, he murmured to Poppy Dawn. Feather Whisker padded from the medicine den carrying a bundle of herbs. Goose Feather shambled behind him. Feather Whisker placed the herbs at Goose Feather's paws. Will you chew these into a pulp while I check for wounds? He addressed his mentor gently, as if he were talking to a frail, troubled elder. Goose Feather was staring at the nursery and didn't seem to hear him. Feather Whisker pushed the herbs a little closer. We'll need lots of comfrey pulp, he prompted. He glanced at the returning patrol. It looks like there were plenty of scratches. Goose Feather blinked. Comfrey? he echoed. Feather Whisker nodded, tapping the herbs with his paw. Goose Feather blinked, then bending down, he began to chew at the leaves. Feather Whisker strolled briskly among the wounded. He inspected Thistleclaw first. That's a deep scratch. It's nothing, Thistleclaw shrugged. I don't feel pain. You'll feel it if it gets infected. He turned to Goose Feather. Did we bring Tansy? Goose Feather sniffed through the leaves and nodded. Go to Goose Feather, Feather Whisker told Thistleclaw. Ask him to rub some tansy in your wound. When Thistleclaw hesitated, Feather Whisker glanced down at Sweet Paw's body. You'll need it treated if you want to be able to help bury your sister. Thistleclaw dipped his head and padded over to the medicine cat. Feather Whisker checked snow fur. Go wash in the stream, he advised. It smells like river clan blood, and licking it off will make you queasy. Yuck, fish. Snowfur shuddered and hurried out of the camp. Bluefur lifted her wrenched claw as Featherwhisker approached and held it out for him to inspect. Featherwhisker wrinkled his nose. Painful, he sympathized, but it'll heal quickly if you rest it. It stung like fury, but Bluefur didn't want to admit it after Thistleclaw had acted so brave. Get comfrey pulp from Goose Feather, Feather Whisker instructed. It'll ease the pain. Thanks, Bluefur limped to the medicine cat. She wondered if he was thinking about the prophecy, measuring it against her role in the battle. She hadn't exactly blazed like fire through the forest, but she'd done all right. Goose Feather eyed her strangely and pushed a wad of pulp toward her. Is that comfrey? Bluefur checked. What else would I give you for a wrenched claw? How did he know what she needed when so much else seemed to pass him by these days? Bluefur smeared the ointment onto her claw. Pine Star, Sunfall's mew made her whip around. The ThunderClan leader was padding in through the gorse tunnel. Dappletail and Poppy Dawn looked up from Sweetpaw's body. Adderfang lifted his head and Stormtail narrowed his eyes. The whole clan fell silent as Sunfall stepped forward, his bloody deer glistening in the morning sun. Where were you, Pine Star? The Thunder Clan deputy asked. Pine Star didn't answer at once. Did you win? Sunfall nodded. We chased those fish faces back as far as the river. They still have sunning rocks. That is a battle for another day, but they won't set foot across the border for a while. A growl rumbled in Stormtail's throat. Good, Pine Star meowed. He padded across the clearing and jumped onto High Rock. Let all cats old enough to catch their own prey gather to hear what I have to tell you. Bluefur looked at Rosepaw puzzled. Shouldn't Sunfall make his report about the battle first? Lionpaw padded over to join them, staring at his paws. Was he sulking because he'd missed the battle? No, Lionpaw didn't sulk. If he had something he wanted to say, he'd just say it. A shiver ran down Bluefur's spine. The suspicion she'd felt since she'd caught him chasing butterflies nagged harder. Lionpaw knew something about their leader. Pine Star gazed down at his clan. They hadn't moved, just turned to look curiously at him. Pinestar looked tired, his eyes dull with grief. 
Blue fur leaned forward, her stomach hollow. Cats of Thunder Clan, Pine Star began, and his voice echoed around the silent clearing until his words bounced off the trees and the rocks. I can no longer be your leader. From now on, I will leave the clan and live with house folk in Two Leg Place. Around the clearing, pelts bristled and the air crackled with tension. Stormtail curled his lip. You're going to be a kitty pet? Sunfall stared at him in disbelief. Why? Adderfang dug his claws deep into the earth. How could you? Poppy Dawn burst out, gazing at him wide-eyed from beside her daughter's body. Pinestar bowed his head. I have been honored to serve you this long. The rest of my life will be spent as a kitty pet, where I have no battles to fight, no lives depending on me for food and safety. Coward. Adderfang's ears were flat. Pinestar shifted his paws. I have given eight lives to ThunderClan, each of them willingly, but I am not ready to risk my ninth. Weed Whisker called from the nettle patch. What could be more honorable than to die for your clan? You would live among Star Clan. Poppy Dawn stroked her tail along Sweet Paw's pelt. And share tongues with clanmates you have lost. Pine Star sighed. I am doing this for Thunder Clan. I promise. You're doing it for you, Stormtail growled. Lionpaw stepped forward. His legs were trembling, and he looked as scared of speaking up as he would be of taking on a Shadow Clan warrior. But he lifted his chin determinedly. Do we really want a leader who no longer wishes to lead? He challenged. Blue fur stared at the young cat. He wasn't just brave. Maybe he had a point. If she were leader, she would gladly give her clan all nine of the lives bestowed on her by Star Clan. Did she want a reluctant leader? Did her clan mates? Around her, warriors were murmuring to one another, shooting rabbit swift glances at Pine Star as if they no longer recognized him. Pine Star padded to the side of High Rock as if he was ready to jump down. Sunfall will lead you well. And Star Clan will understand, he meowed. The other clans might not, Sunfall warned. You won't be able to come back to the forest, you know. Pine Star let out an amused huff. Oh, I can imagine the names they'll call me. I wouldn't be surprised if one of the leaders suggests an addition to the warrior code, that all true warriors scorn the easy life of a kitty pet. But you'll make ThunderClan as strong as it ever was, Sunfall. My last act as leader is to entrust my clan to you, and I do so with confidence. Sunfall dipped his head. I am honored, Pine Star. I promise I will do my best. Pine Star sprang down the smooth gray rock. He stared at his clan, and though no fear showed in his eyes, Blue Fur guessed he was wondering if they'd let him leave without a fight. After all, he was a kitty pet now. Sunfall stepped forward and touched Pine Star's flank with the tip of his tail. You have led us well, Pine Star, he meowed. Larksong padded stiffly to her leader's side, her eyes dark with sorrow. We will miss you. White Eye tucked her tail over her paws. Sunfall will make a good leader, she declared, looking around for agreement. Murmurs of acceptance rippled through the clan, though Stormtail and Adderfang kept a stony silence. As Pine Star wove among his clanmates for the last time, Thistleclaw flinched away. Blue Fur felt a flash of irritation with his lack of respect. Did he think wanting to be a kitty pet could be caught as if it were green cough? Or was he right? Was abandoning the position of clan leader a betrayal that could never be forgiven? 
She fought down the urge to back away as Pine Star approached them and paused beside Lionpaw. Thank you, Pine Star murmured. Lionpaw dipped his head. You were right, Pine Star went on. I had to tell the clan myself. It would not have been fair to them or to you to do anything else. You have a good spirit, young one. When it is time for you to receive your warrior name, tell Sunfall I would have called you Lionheart. Bluefur cocked her head. So Lionpaw had known what Pine Star was up to, and he had kept it secret out of loyalty to his leader. She was impressed. Leopardfoot stepped forward. Pine Star, what about our kits? Won't you stay to watch them grow up? She nodded to the three tiny cats beside her. She had coaxed them out of the nursery when she heard Pine Star's announcement. The two she cats slumped on the ground with glazed eyes. But Tiger Kit, his shoulders already broad and strong beneath his fluffy pelt, pounced on his father's tail. Pine Star gently drew it away. They'll be fine with you, Leopardfoot. I'm not a father they could be proud of, but I will always be proud of them. Especially you, little warrior, he added, bending down to touch his muzzle to the dark tabby's ears. Tiger Kit gazed up at him with huge amber eyes and growled, showing tiny thorn-sharp teeth. Be strong, my precious son. Pine Star murmured, serve your clan well. He nodded, then padded softly into the gorse tunnel and disappeared. The clan began to chatter like a flock of startled crows. We have no leader, Speckletail's pale tabby pelt bristled with worry. Sunfall is our leader now, Tawny Spot pointed out. But he hasn't been blessed by Star Clan. Sparrow Pelt fretted. Sunfall jumped up onto High Rock. I understand your fears, he called. I will travel to the Moonstone tonight. Goosefeather was staring at him, horror sparking his gaze. Star Clan will never allow it. The disheveled old medicine cat was trembling. Pine Star should have shared dreams with them first, told them what he was planning. How will you receive nine lives if Pine Star has not properly given up his leadership? Behind her, Bluefur heard Adderfang murmur, Isn't it about time Goosefeather thought about giving up his own role? Weed Whisker replied, Steady, young'un. He's served the clan well for many moons. Don't turn against him now. There was a shuffling sound as Lark Song wriggled into a more comfortable position. I'll talk to him, she whispered. See if I can persuade him to join us in our den. Feather Whisker is plenty able to take his place now. He's more than able, hissed Robin Wing. He's been doing most of the medicine cat duties on his own for Star Clan knows how long. We should have stopped listening to the rattled old flea bag moons ago. Hush, came a fierce whisper from Tawny Spots. Show some respect. In the center of the clearing, Feather Whisker stepped forward. I will come with you to the Moonstone Sunfall. A murmur passed through the clan, and Blue Fur wondered if he'd overheard the elders talking about inviting Goose Feather to give up his duties and join them beneath the fallen tree. The old medicine cat was standing with his fur on end and his eyes mad, glaring at nothing. It seemed like it might be a kindness to set him free from his responsibilities and let his denmate take over. Our ancestors will not abandon us at this troubled time, Feather Whisker went on. Have faith. Sunfall nodded to the young medicine cat. Yes, we will. We must, he promised. His tail was flicking and blue fur guessed he was feeling as if he'd jumped into the river, unable to touch the bottom with his paws. But his mew was firm. We will make them understand that ThunderClan needs a leader. Feather Whisker is right. StarClan will not abandon us. Bluefur pressed against Snowfur. I hope he's right, she whispered.
Chapter 24 As the sun set the following day, Blue Fur was on her way to find Snow Fur with a vole to share, when she nearly tripped over Thistleclaw dozing beside the nettle patch. He had sat up all night with Sweet Paw's body, Rose Paw and Poppy Dawn grieving beside him, and then buried her before dawn. He insisted on doing it himself, with no help, Snowfur whispered to Bluefur when she made it safely around the sleeping warrior with the vole. He's such a loyal brother. You told me earlier, Bluefur muttered. She was trying to ignore the dreamy look in her sister's eyes. I'll never behave like a cooing dove over any cat, she decided. As the clan shared tongues at the edges of the clearing, Blue Fur basked in the cool evening breeze. She was relieved that the fierce greenleaf sun was disappearing behind the top of the ravine. She didn't envy Sunfall and Featherwhisker their parched journey from the moonstone today. If all went well, they would be back soon, hungry and thirsty. She was just sitting up to check whether there was some decent fresh kill left for them when stones clattered down the side of the ravine beyond the gorse tunnel. Adderfang got to his paws and stared expectantly at the entrance to the camp. Stormtail gulped the last of his mouse and licked his lips. Larksong sat up stiffly and pricked her ears. Bluefur tasted Sunfall scent a moment before he padded into camp, with Featherwhisker following. Speckletail was the first to speak. What did Star Clan say? She blurted out, getting to her paws. Sunfall padded across the clearing and mounted High Rock. All eyes turned to the orange warrior, who already looked comfortable on the gray stone. Clanmates, Sunfall began. Star Clan has approved me as leader and given me nine lives. Cheers erupted from the clan. Sunstar, 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 they called to the darkening sky. Sunstar, Blue Fur yowled gleefully, feeling a rush of pride in her former mentor. Then something caught her eye, and she closed her mouth with a snap. Why wasn't Goosefeather joining in with Sunstar's welcome? The medicine cat sat at the base of High Rock, his eyes dark, searching the faces of his clanmates. When his gaze reached her, cold and burning at the same time, Bluefur blinked and began cheering once more. Sunstar signaled with his tail to one of the cats below him. Tawny Spots, I would like you to be my deputy. The light gray tabby Tom dipped his head. I would be honored, Sunstar. I will serve you well and will always be loyal to my clan above everything. Rosepaw nudged her mentor, her eyes shining while Stormtail nodded respectfully to the new ThunderClan deputy. Congratulations! Adderfang's deep mew sounded across the clearing and was quickly echoed by his clanmates. There is one more duty I wish to perform today as the new ThunderClan leader. The clan looked up as Sunstar spoke. Rosepaw fought bravely against RiverClan and has earned her warrior name. The young tabby flicked her tail as Poppy Dawn hurried to her side and began smoothing her fur. Windflight gazed proudly at his daughter, though Bluefur could see sadness lingering in his gaze. Sweet Paw should have been a warrior today, too. Sunstar stayed on High Rock as Rosepaw padded into the center of the clearing. Rosepaw, from this moment you will be known as Rose Tail. Star Clan honors your intelligence and loyalty, and we welcome you as a full warrior of Thunder Clan. Serve your clan well. Rose Tail dipped her head as her clanmates called her name. Tawny Spots padded forward and pressed his muzzle between her ears. I'm very proud of you, he murmured. Sunstar spoke again. Thunder Clan has kits in the nursery, and the warrior's den is full. We face troubles, it is true. River Clan pushes at our borders and kitty pets threaten our prey. But the clan is well fed, and the forest is rich in prey. I vow to make Thunder Clan as powerful as the great clans of old. Today's Thunder Clan will be remembered alongside Tiger Clan and Lion Clan. 
Our warriors are courageous and loyal and skilled in battle. There is no reason to feel besieged by our enemies. We have defeated them before and we will do so again. Let me carry you forward to a new era in which ThunderClan is so respected and feared that no cat will dare set paw on our lands. When will he take back Sunning Rocks? Bluefur pressed her claws into the earth. She wanted to see the look on Oakheart's arrogant face as they drove those thieving foxhearts back across the border. Tails swished and paws kneaded the ground. Sunstar, Sunstar! The cheer rose again from the excited clan. Sunstar lifted his chin, his pelt gleaming in the moonlight, and let his clan cheer until the trees seemed to tremble with the noise. Blue Fur longed to be standing in his paw prints. He had lifted his clan from anxiety to hope. Imagine being up there looking down at his clanmates. The power he must feel. Her mouth felt dry with sudden, raw hunger. Beside her, Thistleclaw leaned closer to Snowfur and whispered in her ear. Pricking her ears, Bluefur strained to hear. I'm going to be up there one day, hissed the young warrior, addressing the clan. As Snowfur purred encouragingly, Bluefur felt the fur lift along her spine. Not if I get there first. Thrush pelt, Tawny Spots was organizing the patrols. Dawn had not yet broken and the camp glowed in the half-light. Take Speckletail, Fuzzy Pelt, White Eye, and Blue Fur to patrol the River Clan border. Stormtail, Robin Wing, and Thistleclaw, patrol Shadow Clan's boundary. Stormtail nodded and led his patrol toward the gorse barrier. Thrushpelt leaned toward Blue Fur, his whiskers twitching. I hope Snowfur can manage without Thistleclaw for a few heartbeats, he mewed. Bluefur flicked him away with her tail. Was the whole clan gossiping about Snowfur and Thistleclaw? Why did her sister have to be so obvious? Prickling with embarrassment, she headed for the ravine. Sorry, Thrushpelt caught up to her. I thought you'd find it funny. Well, I don't, Bluefur snapped. Tail down, Thrushpelt led the patrol to the river clan border. Bluefur started to feel guilty for snapping at him. The sandy gray warrior had just been teasing. But the sooner he learned he couldn't tease her about her sister, the better. No sense. Thrushpelt stood at the border, tasting the air. We'll remark the border and head back. A few battered brambles and scuffed flecks of blood were all that betrayed the battle that had taken place there not long ago. Do you think they'll try it again? Speckletail ventured. Thrushpelt shook his head. I think they learned their lesson, the mangy furballs. And once Sunstar takes back Sunning Rocks, the border will be easier to patrol. Do you think he will? Bluefur asked. I hope so, Thrushpelt replied. Or we'll never regain the respect of the clans. Bluefur only half heard him. She was gazing through the trees at the smooth rocks, pink in the dawnlight. They were bare. No sign of River Clan warriors, even in the shadows. Blue Fur searched the far bank. No cats there either. What had she expected? To see Crooked Jaw or Oak Heart skulking through the bushes, planning the next attack? Had the two warriors been disappointed about missing the battle? She could imagine Oak Heart, as arrogant as Thistleclaw, boasting to his clanmates that River Clan would have won if he'd been fighting. Blue Fur? Thrushpelt's mew startled her out of her thoughts. Are you coming? The rest of the patrol was already heading away through the trees. Thrushpelt had stopped and was looking back at her. Yes, Bluefur hurried after them. Her belly was rumbling by the time they reached the camp. The fresh kill pile was still stocked from yesterday's hunting, and she was looking forward to a juicy vole. Bluefur, Snowfur called to her. The white warrior was hurrying across the clearing toward her, the morning sun dazzling off her freshly groomed pelt. Bluefur sighed. Is it urgent? I was just going to eat. Come hunting with me, Snowfur begged. If you've already been on patrol, you can eat while we're out. Her eyes were round and hopeful, and Bluefur couldn't refuse, despite her growling belly. At least forest prey will be warm 
and if she didn't go with Snowfur, Thistleclaw probably would. She followed her sister out of the camp, and by the time they'd reached the top of the ravine, she was looking forward to hunting. Leaves swished in the warm breeze, and the forest rustled with prey. Bluefur could barely remember the last time she'd been cold. She tried to imagine Leaf Bear, shivering in snow, billowing clouds of breath. But it seemed too far away. Right now it felt as though Greenleaf would never end. Where should we hunt? She asked Snowfur. Snowfur shrugged. I thought you wanted to hunt. I guess. Bluefur snorted. Her sister was dreamier than ever. She pushed on into the forest, determined to bring Snowfur back to the real world. Are you happy that Sunstar is our leader now? Of course, Snowfur answered. But it feels like everything's changed, Bluefur murmured. She ducked under a bramble and held it back with her tail while Snowfur joined her. Pine Star's gone, Goose Feather's crazier than a fox, and Sweet Paw's dead. She was younger than us. Snowfur paused to nose a pale blue flower hanging over the path. But there's always new life, she mewed softly. Bluefur blinked. What do you mean? Her sister lowered her muzzle and looked at her. Above her head, the blue flower nodded as if it were listening. I'm expecting kits. The ground seemed to dip under Bluefur's paws. Already? She gasped. They were only just warriors. What did Snowfur want to bother with kits for? Snowfur's eyes clouded. Aren't you pleased? Of, of course, Bluefur mumbled. I just didn't expect. Snowfur cut her off. Thistleclaw's overjoyed, she mewed. He says the clan needs new warriors. There are only Lionpaw and Goldenpaw in the apprentice's den. Well, as long as Thistleclaw's pleased, that's all right then. Bluefur bit back the cutting remark. She didn't want to spoil her sister's happiness. But something inside her felt cold as snow, filling her up and choking her from within. Snowfur suddenly seemed further away than ever. She'd be in the nursery soon, and then fussing over her kits with Thistleclaw. Is this the last time we'll ever go hunting? He'll make a good father, you know. Snowfur seemed to be trying to reassure her. I mean, I know you don't like him, but he is good and kind. Bluefur stared at her sister, trying to imagine Thistleclaw being kind. He's a loyal mate, and I trust him, Snowfur insisted. Bluefur sighed. Snowfur's eyes were filled with worry. Bluefur couldn't let her feel like this. I'm thrilled for you, I really am, she mewed. Absently, she plucked up a wad of moss and let it drop from her claw. ThunderClan did need kits. The three young ones in Leopardfoot's litter weren't exactly strong, and Thistleclaw was right. ThunderClan needed more apprentices, and Snowfur's kits would be her kin. Bluefur glanced up at the sky, wondering what Moonflower thought about the new kits. She realized that her mother would be pleased that Snowfur was happy. Bluefur pressed her muzzle to her sister's cheek. I'll be happy too, I promise. Chapter 25 Quick, get Feather Whisker, Bluefur gasped. Goosefeather still hadn't formally retired, but it was becoming more and more acknowledged among his clanmates that Featherwhisker was in charge of the medicine cat duties. On the other side of the nursery, Robin Wing sleepily lifted her head. Are the kits coming? What else would it be? Thistleclaw snapped. The warrior had stopped by the nursery to visit his mate when Snowfur's pains had suddenly begun. Bluefur was glad she had been there too. Robin Wing heaved herself to her paws. I'll get him, she offered. She squeezed out of the den, puffing. 
A half moon from kidding, the small, energetic warrior had become as cumbersome as a badger. Thistleclaw plucked nervously at the edge of Snowfur's nest as his mate writhed in the bracken. Bluefur licked Snowfur between the ears. It'll be over soon, she promised. She tried not to think of Leopardfoot's long kidding, or the death of her she kits before they'd reached one moon. That had seemed particularly cruel, so soon after Leopardfoot had lost her mate to the life of a kitty pet. At least Tiger Kit's strong and healthy, Bluefur reminded herself. He was scrabbling out of Leopardfoot's nest now, stretching up to see what was happening. Leopardfoot tugged him back by the tail. You're as nosy as a squirrel, she scolded gently. Why don't you go outside and see if you can find Lionpaw? Okay, Tiger Kit chirped. He squirmed out of the nursery just as Featherwhisker pushed his way in. Watch out, coming through, Tiger Kit yowled as he scooted straight under the medicine cat's belly. That kit gets bossier by the day, Featherwhisker observed lightly, dropping a bundle of leaves by Snowfur's nest. I know he's the only kit in the clan, but I wish everyone would stop indulging him. He's starting to act like a little leader. Bluefur flicked her tail. Snowfur's kits will give them someone else to fuss over. How are you doing, little one? Featherwhisker bent down to sniff the white queen's head. I'm thirsty, Snowfur whimpered. Can I have some wet moss? Good idea, Featherwhisker mewed. Thistleclaw, please, could you get some? Thistleclaw stopped shredding the bracken at the edge of the nest and looked at his mate. Are you sure you'll be okay? We'll take care of her, Featherwhisker promised. As soon as he was gone, Snowfur sighed. Thanks for getting rid of him before he pulled my nest to pieces. Bluefur's whiskers twitched. It looked like her sister hadn't lost her sense of humor yet. Then Snowfur gasped, and her eyes stretched until the whites showed around them. Featherwhisker pressed his paw on her belly. Pain? Snowfur nodded, holding her breath. Try breathing more, not less, Featherwhisker suggested. Bluefur didn't think she could watch her sister being in agony. Can you give her poppy seeds for the pain? Featherwhisker shook his head. She needs to be able to feel it so we know when the kits are coming. Snowfur breathed out slowly. Will it be long? She croaked. A while yet. Wait there, Bluefur squeezed out of the nursery. Robinwing had settled on the dry earth outside. I thought I'd give you some peace, she meowed as Bluefur trotted past. Thanks. Bluefur called over her shoulder. She scanned the edge of the camp, looking for something. The ferns were starting to appear tired now, their tips turning brown. The faint scent of leaf fall tainted the breeze. Bluefur quickly saw what she was after. A short, stumpy stick, not too splintery, but tough. She picked it up in her jaws and hurried back to the nursery. What's that? Leopardfoot was peering out of her nest. I thought Snowfur could bite down on it when the pains came. Bluefur pushed the stick under Snowfur's muzzle. Leopardfoot shuddered, clearly remembering her own ordeal. I wish I'd had one of those. Thank you, Snowfur panted. Her belly quivered and she grasped the stick between her teeth. The brambles shook as Thistleclaw scrambled through the entrance and dropped the moss he was carrying. Is she all right? She's fine. Featherwhisker reported, but she'll need more moss. Gather it from the stream outside camp. The water will be fresher there. Thistleclaw nodded, turned tail, and left. Bluefur wondered if he couldn't bear to see Snowfur in pain either. Thanks, Snowfur muttered to Featherwhisker. Bluefur was aware of the sun moving slowly overhead, sending shifting shafts of light into the nursery. Snowfur was getting more and more tired, and she kept closing her eyes for long stretches. It can't be long now, can it? Bluefur whispered to Featherwhisker. Not long. He had just given Snowfur a mouthful of leaves to chew. Bluefur recognized the shape from when Leopardfoot was kidding. Raspberry. She hoped they'd be more effective this time. 
Snowfur groaned as another spasm shook her. Here, Bluefur pushed the stick toward her muzzle. No, Snowfur shrieked, pushing it away. The first one's coming, Featherwhisker meowed from where he crouched by Snowfur's haunches. Snowfur trembled as a small white bundle slid out into the nest. Featherwhisker bent down and lapped at the sack encasing it until it split open and a tiny white kit tumbled out, paws churning. Snowfur turned and sniffed at the damp scrap of fur. He's beautiful, she gasped. She grasped its scruff and hauled it to her belly. It began suckling at once, kneading Snowfur with fierce paws. He's a strong one, Featherwhisker purred. Bluefur felt a flood of relief. How many more? she asked. Featherwhisker pressed Snowfur's flank. That's it. Leopardfoot sat up. Only one? A tough little Tom, Featherwhisker told her. You can't ask for more than that. Tigerkit scrabbled into the den. Is it over? He squeaked, peeking into the nest. He blinked at the white Tom. Where are the other kits? That's the only one, Leopardfoot told him. Tigerkit cocked his head. That's all? he mewed. But it's white. It'll never be able to hunt with a pelt that color. The prey'll see him coming tree lengths away. Leopardfoot climbed out of her nest and nosed Tiger Kid away. He'll be a fine hunter, like his mother, she told him. Not as good as me, Tiger Kit mewed. Thistleclaw appeared in the entrance again. This time his jaws stretched with the biggest wad of dripping moss blue fur had ever seen. You'll drown the nursery with that, she teased. Thistleclaw's gaze reached his son. He flung the moss aside and crossed the nursery in one leap. He's beautiful. Bluefur watched his gaze soften, all arrogance gone in a flood of affection. He licked Snowfur between the ears. Well done, he murmured. I'm so proud of you. Can we call him White Kit? Snowfur whispered. Thistleclaw nodded. We can call him whatever you want. He leaned forward and licked White Kit. The kit mewled in protest, then went back to suckling. Thistleclaw stared down at his son, his eyes brimming with emotion. For the first time ever, Bluefur almost felt fond of her sister's mate. Thistleclaw straightened up. I'll go get you the tastiest piece of prey I can find he promised Snowfur. Featherwhisker shook his head. She won't eat for a while, he warned. But that moss will be useful. He plucked a piece and placed it where Snowfur could lap at it. She did so, thirstily, her eyes half closed with exhaustion. Will she be all right? Bluefur whispered. She just needs rest, Featherwhisker promised. She'll be fine. Relieved, Bluefur sat back and watched White Kit suckle, amazed that he knew what to do already. Welcome to ThunderClan, little one. May Star Clan light your path always. Look! Snowfur's soft mew woke Bluefur the next morning. He's opened his eyes already. Great! Tiger Kit's head shot up over the edge of Leopardfoot's nest. Can I take him out to explore? Snowfur looked as if Tiger Kit had suggested taking her son out to play in a fox burrow. Shaking her head, she wrapped her tail protectively around White Kit. You made me go out the moment I opened my eyes, Bluefur reminded her. White Kit gazed around the den, his blue eyes misty, but his tufty ears pricked. His stubby paws kneaded the bedding and his tail stuck straight out like a twig. Snowfur sighed. If he wants to go out, then he can. She wrapped her tail tighter and glared at Tiger Kit. But no farther than the clearing. I'll keep an eye on them, Bluefur promised. You just rest. Snowfur still looked exhausted, hardly able to do more than lap at the moss Thistleclaw kept bringing. Thank you, she breathed. Tiger Kit was already out of his nest and balancing on the edge of Snowfur's. Come on! he called to White Kit. There's loads to see. 
White Kit turned slowly and focused on his little tabby den mate. We're going to be warriors, Tiger Kit told him. We might as well start now. White Kit blinked away the fuzziness in his gaze. Okay, he mewed. He scrambled up the side of the nest and teetered beside Tiger Kit. This way, Tiger Kit led him to the entrance. White Kit followed on unsteady legs. Don't take your eyes off him for an instant, Snowfur called as Bluefur followed the two kits from the den. I won't, Bluefur replied over her shoulder. White Kit looked even smaller outside the nursery. The clearing that stretched away ahead of him might as well have been the valley to high stones. Bluefur felt the sharp memory of her first time out. How big everything seemed, especially the warriors. Stonepelt limped past. Is that our new warrior? He meowed. Bluefur nodded. A purr rumbled in Stonepelt's throat. Well, show him the warrior's den and tell him to stay out. He'll get there soon enough. Amusement lit his eyes. Was he recalling the time she'd wandered into his den? She nodded, whiskers twitching. I will. She didn't want White Kit to grow up for a long time yet. Let him play peacefully and chase nothing fiercer than a ball of moss for as many moons as he can. A half moon later, Frost Kit and Brindle Kit were born. Robin Wing sat up proudly in her nest when Blue Fur came in to visit them. They weren't her first kits, and they had been born as easily as a beech nut slipping out of its shell. The nursery hasn't been this full since we were kits, Snowfur observed. It's too busy, Tiger Kit complained. There's no room for proper games now. Why don't you go out and play, Leopardfoot suggested. You could show Frost Kit and Brindle Kit the camp. Robin Wing's kits started to bounce with excitement at the prospect of seeing their new home. Yes, please. I'll help, White Kit squeaked, trying to beat Tiger Kit to the entrance. Snowfur's son had grown well, but he was still no match for his older den mate, in either breadth of shoulder or stubbornness. Tiger Kit pushed easily ahead of him and led all three kits out of the nursery. Robin Wing sighed. Will they be okay? I don't want them to pester the older cats. Do you want me to watch them? Bluefur asked. That would be great, thanks. Robin Wing settled down in her nest. Leopardfoot stood up stretching each leg in turn. I'll come to and get prey from the pile. The Black Queen was finally looking fit and strong again. She padded from her nest and followed Bluefur out of the nursery. The four kits were already hurtling across the clearing. Not so fast, Bluefur called. Don't forget it's Frost Kits and Brindle Kits first time out. Kits always grow faster when they've got den mates to keep up with. Leopardfoot commented as the kits disappeared into the fern tunnel that led to the medicine cat's den. I'd better see what they're getting up to, Bluefur meowed. She didn't want them getting into Goose Feather's supplies. Leaving Leopardfoot to take her pick from the fresh kill pile, she hurried across the clearing to the medicine den. So much had changed in the last few moons, and all for the better. It seemed as if the shadow that had rested over the clan had been lifted. Pine Star's departure had shocked all the clans, but Sunstar had been resolute at the next gathering and refused to allow any blame to be put on ThunderClan because of the actions of one cat. Sunstar made it clear that Pine Star's leaving signaled a new, stronger ThunderClan, and that kitty pets would be shunned like their two leg owners from now on. As Pine Star predicted, the warrior code had been extended to reject the life of a kitty pet and stay loyal to the freedom and honor of being a clan cat. Now ThunderClan faced the coming leaf fall well fed, with a nursery bustling with healthy kits and warriors confident in their new leader's power. Bluefur felt warm with satisfaction as she padded down the fern tunnel to see what her charges were up to. Get away, you vermin! A vicious yowl echoing from the clearing set her fur on end. She raced forward and burst out of the ferns. The kits were crouched, trembling on the flattened grass, while Goosefeather stood at the entrance to his den in the rock, hissing and spitting, as though faced with a horde of ShadowClan warriors.
Blue fur shot between him and the kits. What are you doing? She burst out. Goosefeather didn't seem to notice her. Wild-eyed and bristling, he twitched his matted tail toward Tiger Kit. Get that creature out of my den, he snarled. I'm not in your den, Tiger Kit protested. To Bluefur's relief, he didn't seem to be frightened by Goosefeather's absurd behavior, just indignant. Get him out of my clearing, Goosefeather repeated. Bluefur wrinkled her nose. The medicine cat stank. His clotted pelt looked as though it hadn't been washed in a moon. And now he was cursing at Kits. Had he gone completely mad? Bluefur swept the Kits back toward the fern tunnel with her tail, without taking her eyes off Goosefeather. Off you go, little ones, she called, trying to sound cheerful. What's the matter? Featherwhisker hurried into the clearing, dropping the bile-soaked moss he'd been carrying. It's Goosefeather. Bluefur hissed out of the corner of her mouth. He's frightening the kits. Featherwhisker took a step closer to his mentor, letting the foul pelt brush his own smooth fur. Sorry, he apologized to Bluefur. He's been having nightmares. They must have woken him while he was in the middle of a bad one. Nightmares? Goosefeather growled. Only when I open my eyes and see that. He bared his yellow teeth at Tiger Kit. I'll settle him down, Featherwhisker soothed. You take the kits back to the nursery. The kits had made it as far as the fern tunnel, but were standing in the shade, staring back in confusion. Blue fur turned and shooed them away. What did we do wrong? Frost Kit was bristling with terror. Nothing, Blue fur promised. Goose Feather's just old, and sometimes he imagines things. I'm not imagining that, spat the elderly cat from behind them. Bluefur glanced back to see Goosefeather pointing a hooked claw at Tiger Kit. Drool hung from the medicine cat's jaws, and his ears were flattened against his head. Keep that creature away from me.